Hi, Terry here from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today you're joining me for another Create Your Own video and this time I'm creating a grass stencil. I love creating scenes on my cards and having a grass stencil would be a great addition. We already have a couple of grass dies but no grass stencils, so I decided to make my own. So let's get started. I'm going to show you two different ways of creating a grass stencil. For each of these methods, you'll need some window sheet or acetate. Now this can be any size you like really, but ideally it should be longer than your standard size card. This first piece I'm using measures about six inches by four and a half inches deep. This first method will actually cut this in half. So you want to have it deep enough to leave you with two decent sized pieces. I'm going to be using the grass die from the special day die set. If you haven't got this one, but you've got the wiggly bug set, you could use the grass die in there and just cut it several times across the width of your acetate. Now I'm just placing this halfway up my acetate and then I'll run it through my die cutting machine. And this is how it will look when it's been cut. So you'll end up with two stencils, the positive and the negative, and both be, can be used on your projects. So let's see these in action. I'll use the positive first of all. I'm just using some Granny Apple Green ink and a blending brush. And I'm lightly applying the ink to the top edge of the stencil. So you can use different parts of the stencil to give you a different look each time and just work your way up the cardstock. And now the negative part of the stencil, which is actually the side I prefer to use. The reason being is that it keeps the ink below the top edge of the grass. So you've got a little bit more control as to where it goes. So again, you can position the stencil wherever you like. That's why I've made it long, longer than the width of my card. And you can vary the piece you use just to add a bit more interest. And then once finished, you can just blend a little ink all over the area just to finish it off. The second method of creating a grass stencil is actually to hand cut the whole thing yourself. Now all you need is a piece of acetate or window sheet and some good sharp scissors. You will also need a ruler and a permanent marker. I'll be drawing a straight line across the top of my acetate and when I do my cutting I'll make sure I don't go below this line. Now, I have tried hand cutting a stencil through the middle of the acetate, like I did with the die, but this didn't work at all. It just looked like a load of crocodile teeth or something. So I gave up on that and found that it's much easier to cut it at the top. Now, what this does mean is that you won't have a positive and negative to use. You'll just have that positive, positive stencil. So I'm starting by drawing a straight line across my acetate and this is probably about a half an inch down. And all the cuts I make, I'm going to try and keep above this line. I found that without the line there to guide me, I tended to travel down the acetate so I, I didn't stay in a straight line at all. Now what I'm going to try and do so you can see what I'm trying to do on the acetate is draw the shapes that I'm cutting. So I'm doing curves and then coming down to that black line and I'm doing curves to the right and then curves to the left, different heights and just sort of mixing it up a bit to try and represent a, a grassy edge. So this is the type of shapes that I'll be cutting on my acetate. Now I've sped this up so you don't get too bored, although you can slow it down if you want to. 
um, and I'm not going to show you the whole thing. It took about um, just under four minutes in total to get across, so it doesn't take too long. Just make sure that when you're cutting, you turn your acetate. You don't try and keep turning your scissors. Um, and once you've done this a couple of times, you can get into the hang of it and it's um, quite quick to do. The trick is staying close to that black line and not going underneath it. And that will keep you nice and straight as you work your way across. Once you've created your stencil, you can remove that line of permanent ink just with stays on remover. And then you can give your new stencil a go and see what you think of it. So again, I'm just using Granny Apple Green Ink and my blending brush. So I'll position my stencil and then lightly apply the ink over the stencil. And then you can change the position and move it up your cardstock. So it works quite well. Obviously the grass bits are bigger and thicker than on the die um, because it's been hand cut. But the results you get are actually okay and can certainly be used on your projects. Now, if you don't like the results that you get, all you have to do is cut that edge off your acetate and go again so you can have another attempt at it and it might take you several attempts before you get a good result I know it did me also when you create your grassy edge it doesn't have to be a straight line so if you want a grassy hill instead you can create one it's a little bit trickier to cut um, but you just draw your outline as we did before and then I would suggest that you trim off the excess so you, you've got a margin to work within and then cut it exactly as you did before. It's a little bit harder to keep your grass blades straight. Mine tended to lean over a bit as I went up and down the hills but I did actually produce a usable stencil at the end of it. And this is the one that I created. So on one side I've got my straight edge and then on the other side I've got my hilly edge. So I'll show you the straight edge quickly first. And now my hilly grassy stencil. Now you can see where the grassy blades are leaning slightly in one direction but it, it still looks okay. I think I'll be able to use this. So here are four of the mats that I've just produced. Now I do prefer the ones with the dies. I think they look much better. But if you haven't got the dies, you do have another option. I've gone ahead and finished off all four mats, how I would use them on projects. And that's with my cloud stencil. So you'll have a better idea of what they would look like on a finished project and I think all are usable but again I do prefer that top right one which is used with the negative of the die cut stencil. I just think it looks much neater and you've got that control over where the ink goes. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.